Hello, I haven't done a video in a while, but I've got some new parts since last time. I've actually had these quite a while now. Um, I've got uh, this dual Xeon rig going here. It's uh, got an Asus Z9PED8WS motherboard. I think that's the right name anyway. Uh, I've also picked up a couple of GTX 780s as you can see here. This one is a EVGA card. Uh, it's just a reference card. I've actually got a water block on the way for it because the second one, which is over here, as you can see, this is the the second card, and it has a Aqua Computer water block on it there. This one's a a copper and nickel one, I think. So that's another reference 780. This one's a gigabyte one doesn't have as high ASIC, this one's I think 76 or 72 uh, whereas this one is quite high, I think this is 82 and a half uh, on the ASIC which is really high the dual Xeons which I've got in here are 8 core Xeons they are the uh, E5 I think uh, 2670V3 V3? No, it's not a V3, it's a V1. What am I on about? Uh, as you can see here, I've got another one. Uh, I've actually got three of these. I've got one that does um, 107 uh, on the base clock, and these two only do about 105. In this dual CPU configuration, they do 104 on the base clock, um, which isn't quite as high. For memory, I am running 32 gigabytes of Kingston HyperX Fury Black. Uh, you can't see that particularly well because the lighting's rubbish, but uh, yeah, I've got 32 gigabytes. All these slots are filled up. If you can see down there, so that's quite slow memory. I think it's running at 1600. C9109 and the XMP on that is 1866 101111 or something awful like that. Uh, this board has got dual gigabit NICs which is quite nice um, and I'm currently powering it with the Super Flower Leadex uh, power supply. This is a 1300 watt gold power supply. Um, as you can see I've got the Fantex coolers on here. Um, just two of those with F one single fan each as there isn't a big enough gap to put a second a front fan on this one here it's just too small I could put one on the back and one on the front but it adds extra noise and I can't really be bothered um, so what I plan to do with this rig is I've been using it for a lot of 3D benchmarking for Firestrike and Vantage unfortunately I can't get it to use both of the CPUs in the physics tests. It only ever uses one CPU, which means unfortunately it is slower than a 3930K at 5.4 gigahertz. Um, these will turbo up to 3.1 gigahertz on um, all eight cores, and that's with the 104 base clock. So they're normally just 3 gigahertz, and with 104 base clock they'll turbo up to 3.1 on all 8 cores, or all 16 cores, if something uses them. So in uh, Cinebench they can get about, I think, just over 2,000 uh, points in R15, which is very impressive. Obviously twice as fast as a single CPU. Um, my plans for this are to actually water cool it. I have ordered two Phobia, I think, LTU2 water blocks or something, I don't know. They were pretty cheap from uh, Aquatuning UK. I have got a Bayrez, an XS PC Bayrez, with a D5 pump. So that's a fairly nice thing. And then I've got some awful monsoon compression fittings and I'll just open these for you a second one handed now as you can see well not very well because the light's rubbish like I said earlier 
But we'll try and take it out here. Now these are supposed to be orange, the sort of a uh, coppery colour I suppose. So they do look awful, but they were very cheap from uh, Overclockers UK. I got these off the gr grade B section. I think I paid uh, £10 per six pack of fittings, which for water cooling fittings, if you don't know, are like two to five pounds each, which is quite expensive. So I've actually got uh, three of these six packs. I've got another two down here. I do have this water block here, which is a Swiftec GTZ, but unfortunately it leaks, um, so I won't be using that. And that's why I've had to order these two other water blocks to put on here. So I've also ordered that uh, aqua computer water block for this, but I've ordered the nickel one, and it's got a plexi window that's like tinted black on it so it looks a lot better than the one on the gigabyte card so that should be good and the tubing that I'm using is the biggest tubing I'm not entirely sure what it is but I haven't got any normal tr tubing to compare to at this very second but it is quite thick tubing as you can see just compared to the logo there on the uh, 780, usually the tubing's probably about that thick. On uh, on standard tubes, I think they're three eighths or something. I don't know, and that's half inch tubing. So that is a bit of an update. I'm currently installing some games to benchmark this 780. I've got a uh, Mad Max downloading at the moment and Tomb Raider. Far Cry in the forest. I'll probably just be doing Tomb Raider and Mad Max to be fair. Um, I'm also going to be overclocking these cards on water as well. I've already done them on air cooling. Um, this card does about, I think it's 1215 megahertz uh, on air. Um, it does tend to, to throttle down a bit though if I go above that. Like it won't black screen or crash or anything it will just throttle down the clock speed even though I've got a custom BIOS on it setting it to like 300 watts or 350 watts TDP. Now on this water cooled card over here I've also tested this on the air cooler that it came with and that um, I think this one only did about 1190 MHz so it was quite a bit behind which is expected with a, a lower ASIC but I think they should both perform fairly well on their uh, water cooling so yeah that is a bit of an update on this hopefully when this is finished downloading I'll be doing some gaming performance on these dual Xeons which I don't think any games will utilise but it'll still be interesting anyway so I'll see you in the next video. Another thing that I forgot to mention in the previous section of this video was that um, this, if you remember, if you've watched my previous video, I was supposed to be putting this in my case which had my 1366 uh, dual socket motherboard in. That was an Intel board, I couldn't overclock on that. Um, and basically the holes on this motherboard are completely different to the ones that the standoff holes have on the um, Cooler Master Half X case. So unfortunately, this wouldn't have fit in that case. So I've had to just have it here on the desk. It doesn't fit on my test bench either, unfortunately, because obviously it's uh, a bit wide. But it's also pretty cool because it makes the... Uh, the graphics cards that are full length look short like normally this the motherboard would end about here and that bit would hang off the end of the uh, motherboard but on this board it doesn't also if you were wondering why this graphics card is not in the top slot it is because if you look from above um, this CPU socket down here is slightly further down the motherboard 
um, and so if you put a full length graphics card in it will actually fit here uh, up to there but then it would hit on this second CPU cooler so I've put it in the in the third slot down as this board has seven uh, full bandwidth PCIe slots which is really good and the blue ones uh, use the PCIe lanes from CPU 1 and the black ones use the PCIe lanes from CPU 2 um, and I've also tested SLI uh, for with one in a black slot and one in a blue slot doesn't make a difference um, in benchmarks as far as I've seen so far uh, so that is a bit unfortunate because I thought in the physics test it might use both CPUs if I had one graphics card using CPU lanes from one CPU and the other CPU but it didn't anyway so that is actually it this time